Well, Rick Womack, the uh, state representative from Tennessee, was uh, was talking about what Islam tells Muslims to do. And we've seen too many examples, whether it's Major Malik Nadal Hassan, whether it's soldiers throwing hand grenades into their commanding officers' tents on the, uh, on the eve of the first Gulf War. We have seen too many examples of betrayal in our midst in the U.S. military to believe that there is not a real threat and a real problem. And Rick Womack pointed this out. And now he's under fire for it, and he's on our Newsmakers line with us today. Rick, you're on the Steve Gill Show. Welcome in. Good morning, Steve. How are you doing today? Have you been surprised by the, by the controversy? Because, I mean, again, we, we aired your clip earlier in the week. We aired the press conference where you detailed why you thought what you thought. And, I mean, it wasn't like you were foaming at the mouth, ranting, spewing anti-Islam hatred. You were simply going through the facts step by step and that there is no other logical conclusion to reach but that the Islamic faith, if you are an adherent Muslim, commands you to put killing Christians, Jews, and, and betraying America ahead of your constitutional oath as a soldier. It's pretty clear. It really is, David. Yes, to answer that question, I have been surprised. I've been getting... Uh support of email from places like France, United Kingdom, Central America, California, Canada. I can't believe it's gotten to be this big of a deal. Again, let me, let me just clarify something up front. They try, they're trying, they being CARE, the Muslim Brotherhood, and even the uh, DNJ down here in Murfreesboro, they're trying to make this a religious issue. It never has been. It is a Sharia law issue, and that's, that's the, the gist of the whole thing. Sharia law, and what Sharia law is doing is trying to overthrow our Constitution. That is their stated goal. As a legislator, I've been approached by some Muslim leaders, and I know other legislators I've talked to, state legislators, have been approached by the Muslim Brotherhood in particular, asking that they be exempt from U.S. constitutional law and fall under Sharia law. That's scary. And and it's not we want to be exempt in another country. They want to be exempt here in the united states they come here in most cases or they convert here and yet they want to apply their rule of law not only to themselves as they want to do initially but ultimately to all of us yeah and i just came back from uh, great britain over from over the weekend and earlier this week i just got back last night and i did some more research over there they've got uh in great britain they've folded and caved to the muslim brotherhood in Great Britain, they have 65 no-go zones where only Sharia law is the rule of law. British law has no authority in those no-go zones, and some of them are dozens of square miles in size. Some of them, the British uh, emergency services can't get in, fire, rescue, police, nobody. And so you have their own little countries inside of the uh, United Kingdom. That's what they want to try to establish here. And... For me, this is a constitutional issue. Uh, Muslim, and let's get talk about the Muslims in the military. This is what I was asked about the other day. Do I think all Muslims who serve in the military are bad and want to kill their fellow service members? No. But there are those who worship under Sharia law, and Sharia law prohibits these Muslims uh, from killing their fellow believers, their fellow Muslims. And they've also sworn an oath to the Constitution that Sharia law doesn't recognize so they have a really it's a catch twenty two. It's a real dilemma for Muslims in the military. And if you if you remember the uh, this recent one here in July, uh, PFC Abdu from Fort Campbell, he put in a conscientious objection to get out of the military. And before they uh, granted him that, they found child pornography on his computer. He went AWOL. They found him down in Texas with bomb making materials, trying to kill more Fort Hood soldiers. Well, you have Major Malik Nadal Hassan, who jumped on the back of a chair, started shooting and killing his fellow soldiers uh, and and shouting Allah Akbar. He had done a PowerPoint presentation uh, to his fellow military personnel just just a few months earlier before he was promoted after spewing his anti-Christian, anti-Jew, pro-Muslim hatred in a PowerPoint presentation. This guy's PowerPoint, fun, uh, PowerPoint presentation lays out exactly what you're saying. It was his argument that Muslims could not kill other Muslims and they should be given conscientious objector status. And if we didn't do that, then we would see violence directed at our own troops. Exactly right. And this is my beef with the military, politically correct, military brass, especially on the Obama administration, is they are turning a blind eye to this and doing nothing. And the end result is our soldiers getting killed. For me personally, and this is, this is my opinion of last Friday, and I stand by it, 
what? If you get a better solution to solve this problem, make sure our soldiers who don't believe in Islam aren't murdered, then tell me. But the only option that I see is that no Muslims are allowed to serve in the military because we can't tell the difference between those who believe in Sharia law and those who don't. And that's my opinion. The, the brass is politically correct. And as long as they stay this way, we're going to see more attempted attacks and even attacks on our fellow service members. Hey, Rick, can you hang on for a few more moments? Sure. Hang on. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Rick Womack, State Representative from Murfreesboro, will give you a chance to ask your questions. What kind of pushback is he getting? And is he getting support from his fellow legislators for speaking his mind? 